everyone. My name is Rebecca Pilly. I'm the Program Director for Health and Wellness Coaching at the Maryland University of Integrative Health. I'll be your host for today's episode of The Wellness Minute. On this episode, we're going to be talking about mental health. Did you know that one in five American adults experience a mental health issue? This can include depression and anxiety, both of which are very common. It's true. In fact, according to the Anxiety and Depression Association of America, generalized anxiety disorder, also known as GAD, affects 6.8 million adults nationwide. What's even more interesting is that women are twice as likely to be affected by this than men. There is a bright side, however. There are two effective treatment options that can help maintain or treat depression and anxiety. They are acupuncture and Chinese herbal medicine. Today I have Dr. Janice Campbell, the Acupuncture and Oriental Medicine Clinical Director and Clinical Division Chair at MUIH, who also has a private practice in Baltimore. Later on, we'll have Dr. Hunter Thompson on to talk about Chinese herbs. Thank you for coming out today, Dr. Campbell. Thank you, and you can call me Janice. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, acupuncture seems like it's a one-stop shop for treatment or maintenance of a lot of ailments that we experience, mental health being one of them. Can you tell me in what ways acupuncture helps with treatment of anxiety and depression? Certainly. Um, I see a lot of patients in my private practice with uh, mental health issues, particularly anxiety and depression. And we also get quite a number of them coming through the student clinic as well. So I've seen a lot of success stories when it comes to acupuncture and um, treatment of both depression and anxiety and other related issues. Great. Well, can you explain a little bit about how that works? Certainly. Um, if you think about the fact that, well, if you look at a three-year-old, they ha if, if they're a healthy three-year-old, they have what we call a smooth flow of chi. They eat when they're hungry, they sleep when they're tired, they're mad when they're mad, they're happy when they're happy. And as we age, either through environmental factors or genetic factors or choices we make, like I'm going to stay up late and do such and such. I'm going to skip lunch. I'm going to you know, put myself in this situation that's uncomfortable. I'm going to, you know, whatever it is. We stop rolling so much and begin to clunk a little bit, which then shows up as both physical and emotional symptoms that um, are just where things have started to hold in our bodies and stop us from sort of living into our true selves. Okay, so that, that explains a lot about how chi can, um, you could have blocks in the chi that cause um, mental, yes. mental health conditions. So, um, so how long does it take before a client can start to see changes in their uh, mental health issues when they're using acupuncture? Well, it really is a very individual medicine. And so some of my patients will feel it immediately before I'm even through putting the needles in. Others will feel it as they get off the table. Some people it's later on that day. Some people it's two or three days later. It really depends on the person um, and how they respond, how quickly their, their chi moves. I've heard a lot about auricular acupuncture. Can auricular acupuncture help with mental health issues? Absolutely. Um, your ear is a map of your entire body in the same way that uh, your massage therapist may use the sole of your foot as a map of your whole body to help you feel more balanced and more at ease. Um, the ear has been used for decades in uh, American acupuncture to treat people working with addictions, but then it is now expanded into more treatment for people with emotional issues, PTSD, things like that. The military uses it a lot. Um, <clears throat> and I actually volunteer at a VFW where we've been, for over 10 years, we've been using what's called the NADA protocol, which is a five point protocol in each ear. Um, the veterans and their family members that we treat report things like they aren't as angry as often, they don't have nightmares anymore, their hair trigger response to things has resolved, um, they're sleeping better, things like that. So that sounds like a real success story for helping our, our veterans and others. Mm -hmm. Do you have uh, any other client stories that you could share with us about acupuncture success? Certainly. Um, I just did a, a case report for uh, the research day at MUIH. And I have a patient who, she came to me, she had lost 11 family members in a 10-year period. 
and had been crying pretty consistently every day for another 10 years or so before she came to see me. Um, during that 10 year period, she also uh, developed uh, low back pain and was told that she had um, dege degenerative discs in L4 and 5. She was finally left with the issue, coming to see me for her back pain, because she had been left with the issue of either getting surgery or taking tramadol, and she didn't really want to do either one of those. And so another patient of mine actually referred her to me. And she came in, and over the course of six treatments, we saw amazing changes. It was not only did her back pain resolve, and she hasn't had any since. Oh, well, I take that back. She wore three inch heels once to a wedding, and she said that taught her a lesson. <laughs> um, but beyond that, she hasn't had any physical pain. And, but the most remarkable thing was that her grief had transformed, as she said, to gratitude and joy. And her twin sons, who are uh, about to head off to college, for the first time this year for Mother's Day, instead of going to the cemetery with their mother and watching her mourn her deceased relatives, they actually went out to dinner and they bought her flowers and they did fun things all day. So that was definitely a win. The remarkable thing about that case, though, there are a couple of things. One, um, it was a very simple series of treatments that didn't bring in tons of you know, bells and whistles when it comes to treatment planning. And um, it also, the, the points that were chosen were not symptom related. They were to help her be her best self. And in doing that, her body was allowed to release both the grief and the pain. Wow, that is a wonderful so story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it wonderful is. Wonderful story. Well, thank you, Janice, so much for coming on the show and enlightening us about how acupuncture can be used to help with mental health. You are very welcome. Thank you for having me. So stay tuned. After the break, we'll bring in an expert to talk about Chinese herbal medicine and how it can help with mental health. Hello, I'm Dr. Rebecca Pilly, Program Director for Health and Wellness Coaching here at the Maryland University of Integrative Health. In recognition of national observance on mental health, I'm sharing an overview with you on how mindfulness contributes to our mental health and wellness. So what is mindfulness? Physician and researcher Dr. John Kabat-Zinn offers a simple definition, which is mindfulness means paying attention in a particular way, on purpose, in the present moment, and non-judgmentally. Experts, such as those at the Harvard Medical School, have researched the effects of mindfulness on health and well-being since the 1960s. They believe that mindfulness works by helping us to accept our experiences rather than to react to them or avoid them. Mindfulness as a practice is beneficial in both the health and healthcare domains. For overall health and wellness, health professionals with a grounding in positive psychology have demonstrated the benefits of helping individuals to reduce stress, decrease emotional reactivity, boost working memory, improve focus, and increase cognitive capability. Related to healthcare issues, the American Psychiatric Association advocates mindfulness in helping individuals prevent depression relapse and reduce rumination, it's also useful in treating a variety of mental health conditions such as substance use disorder, anxiety, and ADHD. In health and wellness coaching, coaches offer different mindfulness techniques that their clients can incorporate into a practice or to help them focus on a particular activity such as a coaching session. Stay tuned to our next Mindful Moment where health and wellness coach and MUIH instructor Katherine Smith will demonstrate basic mindfulness meditation. Hello and welcome back to the Wellness Minute. Before the break, we talked about the many benefits that acupuncture has on those suffering from mental health issues. Right now, I have Dr. Hunter Thompson with me from the Natural Care Center at MUIH. He's going to explain the ways that Chinese herbal medicine can help with your mental health. Thank you for joining us, Dr. Thompson. Well, thank you, Rebecca, and please call me Hunter. Well, thank you very much, I will. So how do uh, Chinese herbs help with mental health? 
The Chinese herbs actually work holistically. They work on the body, the mind, and the spirit or emotional levels. And they're used um, to really help to influence the person both physically as well as mentally. And making changes on the physical level, which the herbs can do, also changes the qi, which I believe um, you might have been speaking about earlier with regard to acupuncture. So the qi actually moving through the body is what animates us. So in a situation like something like depression, you know, the person often has a lack of affect and they don't seem to have much energy. It's very difficult to kind of get moving and do anything. So the Chinese herbs, one of the things that they're doing in that situation is actually having the person's energy be increased and having the qi move more smoothly through the body. So they have more ability to be involved and engaged in life. Wow, so it really does address the whole person. It does. It's really a fantastic modality. Can you explain some of the herbs that are commonly used and how they might be helpful? Well, Chinese herbs are actually um, generally done in a formula, which means that we're taking several herbs and putting them together in different uh, levels in order to make some physical changes in the body. And so uh, you know, the specific formula is designed for the individual. We're generally not doing anything that's just generic. Again, everyone's different. And so from the perspective of you know, how I might treat a person really depends on what's going on with them. And so I do uh, you know, look at all the aspects of the person, how they're functioning physically, you know, what's going on in their bodies, whether they have any, um, you know, any issues like, let's say, digestion as well as some mental issues or you know, any other types of pains or difficulties, and factor that in because that's going to be a, an important aspect of their mental health. Great. So um, how long does it take before a client could see some benefits? Well, I've had people who see benefit within a few days. I would say on an average, it might take a couple of weeks because again, Chinese herbs are very, you know, the, it is plants. So we're not working with um, chemicals, you know, things, pharmaceuticals are oftentimes extracted from plants, but they're specific extracts. And so they work more quickly. Um, the nice thing with Chinese herbs, however, is that, you know, unlike some medications, they're not masking the symptoms. They're actually working to get to the root of what's happening and correct that issue in the body in order to have the person be the best that they can be. Okay. So you talked about Chinese herbs. How do they differ from Western herbs? Uh, some of the herbs are the same and some of them are different. A lot of it has to do with the understanding of how the body works and the physiology. So Western herbs tend to work more on the same uh, level as Western medicine does. So they're looking at it from that lens. And Chinese herbs is being looked at from the lens of Chinese medicine, which has a different, um, has a different paradigm. Neither one of them is better necessarily than the other in the sense that they both have positive benefits. Um, however, Chinese herbs do work much more holistically in my, in my estimation, just because the paradigm on which they're based is, is more holistic. Okay. And what about um, if you're taking medication? What, what can herbs do? So whenever I have a client who is on medication, I'm very careful to make sure that I look up any contraindications. I mean, I, you know, I have those materials as part of my training in Chinese medicine is to know, you know some of the things like what is this medication doing and then what might the herbs be doing, which would tell me like I can use these herbs with this medication or that might for, for instance, it might actually enhance the medication. So oftentimes I'm, I would get in contact with the person's doctor and say, you know, I'm using these herbs and this medication may be enhanced. And so, you know, please make sure that you're, you're being aware of the changes in the patient if we need to make any changes in the medication or the herbs. Okay, that's great to know. So could you give us an example of what a potential client might expect uh, for an office visit? Sure. Well, one of the things um, that I would do clearly is I'm going to be reading the person's pulses. And that's actually done you know, on each wrist. Uh, there's 12 different pulses that I'm feeling, and these are energetic pulses, not just feeling how, how fast the heart is beating. And in doing this, um, I'm getting some information about what's going on um, on a physical level as well as on an energetic or chi level with, with the individual. And on top of that, then, I would also be looking at the person's tongue. And um, the tongue, just like 
the ear or the sole of the foot. It was a reflection of the whole body. So I'm going to look at things like the, the body of the tongue. What color is it? You know, is it swollen? What is the shape of it? Is there, are there any um, different colors on the body itself of the tongue? And then looking at the coating of the tongue. So I would ask someone not to scrape their tongue or brush their tongue before they come in so that I can see what's the normal coat that they might have on their tongue, which gives me some information about how certain you know, things are, are working in the body. Specifically, digestion is one area that can really be reflected in the coat on the tongue. Now, one of the interesting things, of course, is you know, also reminding people, don't eat things like blueberries because it'll turn their tongue blue. And I might go, wow, your tongue is blue. That might mean this. But in reality, it meant that they ate a lot of blueberries. <laughs> Or the really interesting one is Pepto-Bismol, which turns the tongue kind of a black color, oh. which is not a good thing in Chinese medicine. And knowing that they took Pepto-Bismol will tell me it's not something really going on with the person. It's actually just a reaction to that particular medication. Okay. Well, um, do you have any success stories with clients? You've oh, been practicing for a while. Yes, definitely. Yes. It's been, um, it's been really great working with clients with uh, Chinese herbs and one of the people that I worked with uh, was a woman who was suffering from both anxiety and depression. And it was very interesting because in a way, um, it's sort of opposites. You know, depression is sort of the, you know, the body's kind of slowing down, things are a little bit stagnant, it's hard to get moving. And then anxiety is kind of where everything's going up and really moving too fast and the person kind of can't calm down. Mm. So sometimes this happens with people where they, they feel depressed and then something happens and they become very anxious. So I worked with this woman and I was using a particular herbal formula that was designed specifically for her that helped to move things in the body, get the qi moving, but at the same time kind of modulate the level so that it didn't go up into these anxious symptoms. Wow, that's pretty amazing. So Hunter, I wanna thank you so very much for coming to the show and talking to us about the benefits of herbs on mental health. Well. There you have it, folks. Acupuncture and Chinese herbal medicine are two types of healing treatments that can help maintain or treat mental health issues. If you want to learn more about these therapies, visit um, the nccih.org. That's uh, at the National Institutes of Health, and you'll find more information about them. My name is Dr. Rebecca Pilly. Stay tuned next month when we'll talk about men's health. Thanks for watching.